Hello all, welcome back to another video. In this video, we will be looking at how we can use the Rust programming language to build Windows EXE binaries on our Kali Attacker machine. This is also known as cross compilation. We will be exploring Rust to perform AES encryption and decryption of a Metapreter shellcode file and also build a shellcode launcher with Rust. Will this be able to bypass Windows Defender? Watch and find out. Without further ado, let's get started. You will need Rust installed on your Kali machine. So if you haven't done that already, you can install it easily with apt install. Once that is done, you can do a cargo new hello world and this should create a new Rust program that will do a console print hello world. We can see that the cargo.toml file will be created. This is the version control of your program and it includes what are the dependencies needed as well. When you build your program, Cargo will download the dependencies required for your program stated over here. In the source folder, we can see that the main method and the printing of Hello World is created for us. We can build the program now using Cargo Build dash dash release. The compiled program will be produced in the target release folder. We can also easily cross compile this to produce a Windows EXE binary. Now this will produce the Windows EXE binary in the targets Windows release folder as shown. Let's transfer it over to our Windows machine and see if the EXE binary works. Nice, this is pretty straightforward. Now let's take a look at how we can perform AES encryption and decryption with Rust. With the help of ChatGPT, I have the following AES demonstration code ready. Most of the time, the stuff that you want to do, there is already a module or a library for it. In Rust, this is called a crate. So it is pretty straightforward to just make use of the crate available. In this case, you can see that these are the dependencies required for our AES encryption demonstration. Let's look at the main.rs source code. First, you will need to declare the external crates that you will be using and the functions from the class. Then it is as simple as calling this function to perform whatever it is that you want. This program will take in two arguments, encrypt or decrypt. The encrypt function will perform a key derivation from a passphrase supplied to ensure that the key size is always consistent. The IV and the sort is set to zero for simplicity. After performing the AES encryption, the encrypted data will be written to a new file and the key used for the encryption will be stored in key.txt. The decryption function is similar, except it takes in the encrypted file and the key.txt file as input and it will perform the decryption routine on it. The decrypted file will then be created as decrypted.bin. Let's compile this and give it a go. Let's generate a Metapreter reverse shell shellcode file and test this out. Let's perform the AES encryption first. Nice, it seems to be working. We can see that the encrypted file is created and also the key text file. Let's do a SHA-1 sum on the shellcode file and the encrypted shellcode. If we were to do a reverse to perform a decryption routine, the decrypted shellcode should return the same SHA-1 sum. This is how we can be sure that our AES encryption and decryption is indeed functional. Nice. We can see that the decrypted.bin file indeed has the same checksum value as the original shellcode.bin file. Now we have a working Rust program that is able to perform AES encryption on a given file. This will be helpful. Now let's take a look at another Rust program that I have prepared for this demonstration. This is a shellcode launcher in Rust that I have referenced from this bin hack Rust shellcode GitHub repository using the create thread shellcode execution technique. As shown in the screen, this code reads a local shellcode file and executes it. 
our program will be better by improvising it to read the shell code file remotely from a HTTP endpoint. And instead of fetching it unencrypted, our program will fetch an AES encrypted shell code file as well as the key remotely and execute it in memory. As shown in the source code of our demo program, our program will use the request create to perform the HTTP request to download the files. It will then perform AES decryption on the file with the key and subsequently use the create thread technique to execute the shellcode in memory. Let's compile this and give it a go. Since this shellcode launcher will be executed on our target Windows machine, let's cross compile it with the target flag to produce a Windows EXE binary. Compilation is successful. Now let's transfer it over to our Windows machine. As shown in the screen, this dialog box appears because we have automatic submission turned off. We can simply dismiss it. The binary is able to land on disk successfully as there is no payload in it. We will need to set up a web server so that the Rust program can fetch the shellcode and key from our Kali machine. Let's do that with Python web server. We should also set up a listener with MSF console for the Metapreter reverse shell payload that we are about to execute. Alright, now let's execute the Rust shellcode launcher on our Windows machine. As shown in the Python web log, we can see that our target Windows machine downloaded the payload and key. If we were to hop over to our MSF console listener, we can see that we have a reverse shell established. Awesome! Alright guys, I hope you all have found this video to be useful and entertaining. I strongly suggest and recommend that you play around with different shellcode execution techniques in Rust that can be found on public GitHub repositories. It will be beneficial to explore and learn and try out new stuff. The code used in the video will be hosted on the Gemini Cybersecurity GitHub repository and it will be provided in the video's description so be sure to check it out. If you are interested interested in learning about hacking Windows Active Directory and have a feel of how it looks like, there is a playlist available on my YouTube channel over here. It has 4 episodes which showcases the common scenarios you might encounter and what kind of tools you can use to test a Windows Domain Active Directory environment. Here is a quick shout out to everyone who have donated to my channel so far. Thank you and I really appreciate it a lot. Alright, this is it to the video. Please help to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It will really help out the channel a lot. Thanks all, I appreciate it and I will see you all soon in the next one. Bye.